I'll wait for you to get done texting. Text them in the middle of a video, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, people can't help but see it there. That's all right. All right. Last minute, man, and we are back on the range. I'm with my good buddy, Mr. Obvious. And Mr. Obvious, what are we talking about today? Oh, we're talking about this Ruger uh, Gen 2. Yeah, Ruger American Generation 2. Mm -hmm. And I, I got to say, uh, they they seem to have done a really good job with this rifle. Yeah. Uh, the Ruger Americans have always been a no-frills, kind of utilitarian rifle. And uh, they, they've kind of stuck with that within this price point. They are a little more expensive mm -hmm. than the previous generation. But, man, have they really upped the ante uh, aesthetically anyway, I will say. You know, you got this spiral twisted barrel, uh, and it's got this bronze Cerakote on it. I mean, it is a handsome rifle. It is. It's nice. And I think we got it equipped with a perfect scope, too. So, yep. I mean, it, for this gun, th this scope's not going to. Uh, bankrupt deal or anything like that. I, I mean, it's, tell them what the scope is. This is the Vortex Venom one by six by twenty four second focal plane. So this is so, an LPVO. Mm -hmm. So this is really good if you want to go kind of use it as a red dot almost. Yeah. Uh, be at one power for for a quick acquisition, so to speak, and then it goes up to six power. Which uh, within the range, realistically, of a uh, of a five five six or a yeah. two two three, mm -hmm. I think you're right where it needs to be. Uh, I'm with Mister Obvious <laughs> on that. Uh, now, what's really tell them about what's really neat about this rifle? Something that we both thought was cool. Uh, yeah, that barrel, the twist on this barrel, it is really cool. I mean, I really like that. Um, it does have a muzzle break, and the big thing. Is the magazine? I, I I thought this was really cool. You know, yep. you're you're talking about um, you know, cross compatibility with different firearms you might own. Yeah. And uh, you know, if, if you want to go hunting, you got your you know, yeah. your hunting mag, and then uh, you know, if you're mm -hmm. driving around in your UTV on the property and you're worried about predators like uh, you know, coyotes or something, you know, feral hogs, that kind of thing. Uh, yep. This can dispatch them, and you can have uh, twenty rounds. Yep, tw put a twenty round mag in it, uh, AR mag, yep. AR fifteen mag. Right. Could, or you can put a thirty rounder. You know, I think it is cool to have that cross compatibility um, uh, of your different firearms. Um, we'll talk in the after action report uh, what we think about the rifle. I have not shot this at all. Uh, Mr. Obvious, you have done a basic zero on this, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So paper, and we're we're really gonna up the ante today, aren't we? Yeah. We're using time. some old Norinco ammunition from what 1988. Yeah. <laughs> and we got some Wolf 223 ammunition. Both of these are 55 grain projectiles. And we got uh, three of the behind that box. Three of the Federal Full Metal Jacket. Okay, and then you've also got some hand loads. Yeah, I got some hand loads. So uh, basically what we're trying to accomplish here is show you, typically a lot of people will stockpile stuff like this, this Wolf or the Norinco, for those of you who were uh, uh, buying ammunition circa 1980. <laughs> like me. So, yeah, <laughs> so if you stocked up on that stuff, that's what a lot of people do. I know for ARs, you know, uh, IMI is pretty much a hot item right now. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, it's it's uh, you can sling lead with it. So we'll have these out. We're going to test them. We're going to test the hand loads and see how this baby grip. Mr. Sure. Obvious do all the shooting today. That way we've got one shooter. Because uh, that's something I've gotten in the past when we're both shooting. Somebody will say, well, you shoot different than him or something. And that's uh, a fair fair enough assessment. So we're going to remove that. And just uh, Mr. Obvious is going to do the groups. And we are set up at 100 yard with paper targets. And uh, after each group, we'll, we'll go down and check these out. So uh, without any further ado, let's get to shooting. Let's do it. Okay, so first things first, we're going to check the trigger pull on this uh, here rifle. And it feels nice and crisp. It feels good. Let's see what we got here. What was that? Two pounds, six. <laughs> six point seven ounces. Well, try it one more time. That's awful light. That's, that's awful light. It felt good. Clear. Yeah, felt good. I got uh, three pounds, two ounces. Okay, so you're right in there. We'll do, we'll one, do one more. Put 
third time's a charm. Kind of do a little Well, it, that's still pretty, you know, I'm, I'm very tickled with that. Three pounds even. Now, did you adjust that or was that out of the box that way? I lightened it a little bit. Okay, yeah. that's that's uh, that's much. perfect though. No, for way. for me, three pounds is right where I want to be. Well, when it come when it come, it was like three pounds eight point four. Okay, uh, right out of the box, I tested it. Then I dressed it down to about three pound, right around in there. Yeah, for hunting, that's where I like it. I don't like much lighter than that for hunting. I gotcha. Don't yeah. let the gun I, off. I that. agree with that. I'm really digging that hat too, there, Mister Obvious. Oh, you like my hat? I do. Huh. I do. Let's well, do that. Why well, don't we? Well, make make America great. Again? Uh, I'm thinking we should. I think we should. <laughs> All right, now let's get out here and shoot. All right. Okay, so you can see the target is at 100 yards. See what how all these group, and it's good to see how this cheaper ammo does. You know, but uh, I'm excited to see it. But Mr. Obvious, fire when ready. Okay. And this is Wolf Ammunition, two two threes. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Okay. Tight chamber. It's a little tight. Yeah, it's going to be broke in. So, uh, top left, correct? Yeah. And that's what's great about a 223. There is no recoil coming off that. None. It, it like don't even move. Yeah. You, you won't even see my shoulder move. Right. All right. So you give us one more. And, of course, we'll view all these. And it's a good thing I did come down here and check because we got a massive flyer. <laughs> so I don't know if Mr. Obvious was accidentally aiming at that or if we got a flyer there but we'll ask him but uh you got two pretty close and then you got a wild one here so that could have been perception but our next grouping won't be on uh on either one of these we'll have to move down so uh it's a good thing i came down here and checked all right so i went back down there fired three shots myself at the far left target and uh did not shoot as tight of a group with two i shot about a two inch and then I had a flyer going into the other paper, just like Mr. Obvious did. So uh, it was identical. Um, so we're switching up and going straight to the Federal because I want to see if a more quality ammunition is going to show us any difference here. So we've let this barrel cool. Uh, we even went and sprayed it out with an air compressor <laughs> and, uh, and got her nice and cooled off. And Mr. Obvious is going to fire three shots of Federal is that uh, 223 and 55 grain? So, uh, and shoot at the bottom left target there, Mr. Obvious. Because we got a flyer going into the other paper. I'm going second target down. Okay. I'll get down there and take a look. Oh, Mr. Obvious is going to be so upset when I show him this. Um, two, three, and that is, uh, shoot, that's uh, four and a half inches. So, uh, not good, not good. <laughs> okay, and that was with Federal 55 grain. And you can see I went back and shot again, and it went pretty wild. Of course, the barrel was hot. And I got one way over here too. So this is the first two shots, third flyer, my first two, third flyer. And uh, this is with that Federal. So let's take it up to a 62 grain steel core penetrator here and see if we can't uh, get this dialed a little better. Mr. Obvious, I'm getting this camera loaded in here. And he is loading up. Show the folks at home what you're loading there. These are the IMI 62 grain and these are steel core penetrator, okay? So we're, we're gonna see, cause this does have a one in seven twist barrel, correct, Mr. Obvious? Yeah, I so, don't believe so. So, uh, which it, it should do better with 62 grain and up. I'd say the 77 grain Sierra Match Kings might be money on this. But we're seeing it does not like that cheap stuff. I didn't even try the Norinco. I said, why waste your time? 
<laughs> so, cause we know we've shot this stuff a lot and we know how it shoots, but, um, let's, let's go ahead and get these in and see how she does. Now you're shooting at the very bottom target. Now the bottom target left to the left. And I'll run down there again after he's done. Okay, well, I'll get down there and take a look at it. And uh, uh, looking at the brass here. You know, IMI loads these up pretty good. You can see the, uh, I don't know if I can show this on camera here, but the primers, if it'll zoom in on that, I might not be doing anything worth doing. But yeah, the primers are a little more flattened out. These are, these are a little hotter. Yeah, and these here. Yeah, you can see. It's cold. Looks like a donut. <laughs> yeah, looks like a donut around the uh, primer. So we'll get down there and look. Okay, now it looks like we're getting somewhere. All right, so we saw this get a lot tighter, and you are an inch and a half that away, and about the same this way. So we're shooting one and a half MOA there, maybe one and three quarter, which isn't anything special. But we're seeing this tighten up, uh, getting our expectations where they need to be. So uh, let's get some of Mr. Obvious's hand loads and see if we can't start dialing this in. Uh, I can tell you this, that 55 grain stuff, it is not liking at all. It is effectively all over the place. Uh, you would miss a squirrel at 100 with that. All right, so Mr. Obvious has got his hand loads here. He's got some 53 grain hand loads. I said, let's not even waste our time with that. Let's let's go to the heavier bullet. And what do you got there, Mr. Robbies? I've got a 69 grain hollow point boat tail match uh, with Hogden 335 powder. Okay. And the overall length is uh, two inches, 210 thousandths. All right, so go ahead. Top right hand target or to the far right. And uh, that way we got good separation there. Yeah, now, and, I do have loads in here that's ten thousandths off the lambs for accuracy, but right. I don't know what they'll do, but we'll find out. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see what these that will actually load up into a magazine, because that was the uh, thing you get into when you're loading for accuracy. The way Mr. Obvious is saying, it becomes basically a single shot. It doesn't fit in the mag. Yeah. All right. Top right, Mr. Obvious. Let's go. I'm going top the third one over. There's four in a line. I'm going the third one over. So it's one left of center, left of the far right? Just yeah. one over? Uh-huh. Okay. Or do you want to go to the bottom? Whatever you want to do, brother. Just tell me what you shot at, and I'll go down and look at it. Let's go to the bottom, second one from the right. All right. Ready? Yes, sir. I'll get down there and take a look-see. Okay, so finally, this is what I'm talking about right here. That whole group, that, and that's with a uh, uh, 69 grain bullet. So we see it definitely is liking the heavier bullets. All right, so this one here is for the reloaders, as Mr. Obvious said. So those of you who are into reloading will understand this perfectly. But he's basically loaded these where they won't fit in the magazine but they fit in the chamber. It's just a very snug fit in that chamber, correct? Yeah, they're, they're 10 thousandths off the lambs. So the bullet's long enough, they will not fit in the mag. So we're gonna have to load them one by one. Correct, and we're, we're expecting these to do some very nice things. But which target are you shooting at there, Mr. Obvious? I ain't rightly decided yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's whatever feels comfortable when he's looking through there. Yeah, so.
So oh, this, right. this makes your rifle a single shot doing this, but that's all right. We're doing this for accuracy. So let's go bottom all the way to the left. Oh, okay. You didn't shoot at that one yet? Might have. Yeah, you I did shoot have. at that one. You I can't do that one. Let's go to... Uh, and you hit inside both those on the left, the two no. to the left. I'm you... going to the middle, second from the left. Okay. Write this down. So the second pair down, one on the left. You got it. See, you, you got to decipher our uh, thought processes too. It's whatever <laughs> It's whatever he's feeling comfortable with. <laughs> second from the left. All, All right. right, here we go. Ready? Yes, sir. Oh. Did you say, hold on a second. Did you say second from the left or second from the right? Second from the uh, right. This is, we're going all the way okay. to the right. Okay, because I was going to say, you got bullet holes in that one, man. Second from the right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, I've seen that in the scope about time you said. Yeah, you got to yeah. keep your shooter happy here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> second from the right. Okay. I'm going to tell you, if, if I bought this, a lot of people are looking at like for, for a youth shooter or something, I would definitely remove that muzzle brake. It is unnecessary, in my opinion, in the 223, and that is just ridiculously loud with that. Yeah, it, it's loud. Yeah, I have to say, the... Uh, <laughs> The slight benefit you'd be getting from recoil reduction, the 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 noise increase would make me flinch more than the recoil. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're hunting. You're not going to be wearing hearing protection. All right. Well, I'll get down there and take a look-see. All right. So we're down here at the second <laughs> to the right in the middle, as he said. But, uh, yeah, we're actually very close to this. This is slightly tighter, you know, uh, of a group. So you are going to get a little bit of a benefit from that. Uh, you know, that's squeezing every inch of performance you can get out of it uh, when, you're, when you're loading that way. But uh, as far as just your standard hunting load or field load, that's what I would go with. Definitely go with a heavier bullet. I wish we had some 77 grain to compare with because I think that would tighten it up even more. But uh, this is shooting the way I would be happy with it shooting. These up here, these 55 grain bullets, that, that's all over the place. So you'd want to avoid those. And we are back with our after action report. And what do we have to report today, Mr. Robbins? After report, I'm all over the place, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's with the, uh, with the 55 grain bullet. Uh, I shot the same with it. So uh, this is a sporter rifle. It's not a it bull is. barrel gun. It so, yeah. you know, it, it's not shooting bad for what it is. Uh, Correct. But I have to agree with last minute, man, that it is firing toward the heavier bullet better. Yeah. So maybe we'll get, see if we can get some 77 grain bullets or something of that nature yeah. and uh, get, some, get a little heavier and get see some what match kings and throw some 77 grains in there. And I think that would be your hunting load. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, maybe not match king, but you know, a, a lead point. Yeah. It did like the Varget powder just a little bit better. Uh, what seems, you've seen on paper. Yep, yep. So, uh, every gun's different. And you know, you reloaders out there, you can change your bullet length. You can change your powder. You can change your primers. Everything comes in effect. Yep. Um, well, I, you've seen, you can have the same weight bullet. You yeah. got your burger bullet versus a, 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 a Sierra and same same grain and one will out shoot the other. Yeah. You know, yeah, you in can different tell rifles. These IMIs is heat treated. You can see knurled cases. They've been yeah. heated from here up. But I like IMI ammunition. I yeah, think it's pretty good quality. I, I'd like to keep that a secret because I don't want everybody buying yeah. it. But no, I think it's pretty good. But uh, Bang for your buck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm kind of with you bench shooters out there. I, I mean, I do a lot of bench shooting, long range shoot. If I ain't cut bullet holes, I'm kind of ticked off. You yeah, know he gets saying? all upset. I get bent out of shape. He gets so. all upset. Yeah, we were shooting with some fellas that were getting ready to go on an elk hunt, and uh, 
he had his guide with him and he kind of looked at us like we got two heads because we're talking about how accurate a rifle, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's, here's, here's the way I look at it. Uh, the rifle will most definitely typically outshoot the shooter. Okay, mm. so, but I like to get something where if I know what it's doing off sandbags, off a bench, and I see what it can do, and I see how it's printing, then I get out here and, uh, you know, I throw up on the side of a tree or something and I shoot, I can, I can test it and see what am I doing wrong, because I know the rifle's on, I know it's zeroed, so if I'm hitting to the right or left, well, that's something I'm doing. You know, maybe, you know, if it's uh, up and downward movement, is my breathing getting into effect? Am I flinching? Am I lunging? That's where you can start to train and get better. And I learned that stuff in the military. We always start out bench shooting in the military. You want to make sure your rifle's zeroed correctly mm -hmm. and uh, you're not just chasing your tail. So, um, guys, the bench shooting stuff is important. You know, and I've heard a lot of guys on YouTube even kind of talking down bench shooting. Uh Guys, you got to know what the rifle can do before you know what you're doing right or wrong, okay? So, uh, with that being said, what do we what do we like about this rifle, Mr. Obvious? Give me some likes. Uh, man, I, 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 I do, I like the, um, just, I like about everything, the feel of it, the mm -hmm. weight of it. Uh, I really yeah. like this scope. It, it, it is a good match for this gun. I'm right. Thinking, this venom has got that lee little bitty dot in it right in the mm -hmm. middle, and I can put it right in that square one inch box. It's a one half, inch, one half MOE. Yeah, yeah. so I, I mean, that is, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a later date, um, me and Last Minute Man can take this out to 400 and see how the drop rate's going to be with this gun at 400 yes. compared to the bullets. We're, we're, we have to do a little research. Uh, see what bullet weight's going to be for that drop rate, whether it's going to be a 50, 55, or a 69 grain bullet, 60 group, two grain, IMI, or whatever, but we'll have to research that. But anyway, I do like the uh, the mag. I mean, you yes. could use That's very handy. Very uh, handy. I can take a 10-round uh, Colt AR mag and, uh, and put it right in this gun. Yeah. Yeah, I could take a regular AR mag and uh, put it right yep. in this gun. Yep. I mean, it takes, I mean, the bolt is a little bit hard to uh, push and lock down. And a lot of that might be breaking too. Well, well, that, they had some issues, Ruger did, on some of the uh, locking on these guns. Really? And this, yeah, so this is a little bit harder to push forward. And another thing I don't like is when this is the original mag. I mean, it's good in a way to let you know you're empty, but if you're single shot shooting like I did, you can't shut that bolt. Locks it. Unless you, you see me in the video, I will drop the mag a little bit, then yeah. shut the bolt, push it back up, right. and lock it. Right. So I kind of like my mags to go forward if I'm single shot shooting and stuff, but... That's fine. I mean, that's good. If you're out hunting, you know you're empty. So that'd be a, a slight nuisance to you if you're bench shooting. It, yeah, for bench shooters, that's a yeah. little bit of a nuisance. But other than that, the bolt, removing the bolt from this gun is kind of tight. You got this hump on here, so they got to release. You can, and it hits. You got to pick it up a little bit. Yeah. So it, it's kind of tight there, but. None of that's really a big deal. No, but it, other than that, th this is aluminum block bedded in here. It's got mm -hmm. two aluminum blocks. It is great. And it's free floated. It's you know, free floated. It's pretty much getting to be an industry standard yeah, now. I, We're seeing that on everything. I really like this gun, I'll tell you. Yeah. I, I can't knock much about it. The profile of the barrel is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, the gun shoots good. We're going to find out what ammo it likes. But other than that, what have you got? Well, uh, I'll tell you some things I like first. One, if I'm out in the field and I've got this, I can put it on safe mm -hmm. and still operate my bolt. Yep. But I can't pull the trigger. Yep. Or I can bring it down another one and lock the bolt in. So if I'm hoofing it around in the woods and I'm hitting up against branches and stuff. You ain't going to lose your bolt. I don't have to worry about the bolt getting knocked open and losing my ammo or okay. breaking something. So I like that. That's I like good. having the three stages. And that's offered in a lot of uh, a lot of Ruger stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, my scout does the same thing. Uh, and it's got a Mauser action, so it's a little different. But... Uh, I do like that. I, I like the modularity of the uh, of the stock here. Uh, you got your cheek riser. I'm sure you can purchase yeah, yeah, this, different this ones. This is removable. Yep. And you can adjust the length of pull here. Yeah. So if you got a kid, you can remove this uh, sling bolt. Mm -hmm. Take out this spacer and put your uh, 
kit pad up here yep. for, for a small youth shooter. So, and I like that. And that's really in its price point and, and with, you know, just how light and handy this rifle is. Now they make shorter barrel profiles for this. I'm like Mr. Obvious, I like the longer barrel profile. Uh, it, it, it's gonna, in theory, give you more accuracy. It will definitely give you more velocity. Uh, but when we're talking a youth shooter, I think that's what's really in mind with this. Not that, I mean, heck, I'd be happy with this rifle. Yeah. You know, it is a good rifle. But I think this really does kind of, dare I say this, it, it is a good first rifle. It is uh, just excellent made. I think Ruger just makes an excellent product. I think they've really upped the ante for the industry doing this. A lot of aesthetically nice things on here. Now, Mr. Obvious and I were talking, and he's got a Savage Axis in a 223. Yeah. That does outperform this uh, over a varying spectrum of rounds. So yeah. we can shoot 55 grain or 62 grain, and it was shooting a lot more consistent with both. Yeah, I think the bullet, uh, the twist of the barrel's got a lot to do that. It absolutely that. does. Mm -hmm. so. A one in seven twist versus say, you know, a, a, a one in nine, you yeah. know, uh, which is what you see a lot of guys running uh, when they're trying to be in between and accurate. Uh, but it, I mean, am I disappointed in the accuracy? No, I mean, it, it does what you would expect. Uh, but when you get to these heavier bullets, we start seeing it shine, you know, it, yeah. it really, really shoots very well. So, uh, you know, and, and like you stated, every rifle is going to like something different. You got to get out, play with it, see what you like. If you're really hunting with this, I would think you'd want the heavier bullets anyway, unless mm. you're hunting uh, prairie dogs or something. Yeah. Uh, then I could see. Now, something I will say, this is just me, folks. This is just my two cents on this. Uh, why, oh, why do we have a muzzle brake on a two, two, three? That is, uh, again, this is not a competition gun, so what would be the point? Uh, there's no follow-up shots with a bolt action. You're not <laughs> rapid firing. There, there's no reason to have this on here. It's deafening. Uh, for a youth shooter, you know, you're, when you're hunting, or at least when I'm hunting, I don't wear your protection. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you should, you know, and, and people can uh, uh, tongue lash me in the, in the comments if you disagree with me, but I never hunt with ear protection on. And... Uh, I, I would not have a muzzle brake on any rifle I'm hunting with. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want to be able to hear what's going on around me before and after the shot. So, yeah. so, uh, I don't, I don't like a muzzle brake, uh, and let, unless I'm competition shooting or if you're shooting a Magnum caliber, uh, you know, and you're recoil sensitive. Um, yeah, I, I could see the muzzle brake, but on this, it just no reason, uh, I would take this off immediately and put a thread protector on it, and you're good to go. Yeah, I wish it would have come with a thread protector be because nice. I'd definitely probably take it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, teach their own. Like I said, you feel free to disagree. This is a way to do things, folks, not the way. Uh, my opinion is not the end-all, be-all that works for everybody. It's what works for me, though. And uh, But this is, in its price point, a very good rifle, I think. Yeah. Well, the main thing is you can satisfy some of the people some of the time, but you cannot satisfy all the people all the time. That's so right. You've got to go with what you like. That's and, right. And, uh, you know, I like this gun. Uh, I mean, you can't beat the trigger pull. It's got a great trigger, <laughs> great crisp trigger. You yeah. know, I love the aesthetics of this rifle. Again, I, I just can't mention that enough. It's just what a, what a handsome rifle. Yeah. You know, this is. It is pretty. It and, is a pretty game. And, uh, I mean, this isn't a $1,200 rifle. No. This is a, a sub-600. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't want to say what you paid in particular for it, but... Uh, yeah, the receipt's in the box right there. And, yeah, but <laughs> but anyway, you know, work out a deal with, yeah. with your with your gun store. You know, everything's negotiable. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, always do that. And he did purchase this at American Gun and Pawn, yeah. located mm -hmm. in Dry Ridge, Kentucky. And those are great <laughs> fellows to work with. Uh, you know, they will always give you a fair deal yeah. and that's, that's what you want, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I want to, I want to support my local gun shops. You want to see them do well. So, you know, if you buy local when you can, okay. Yeah. But, uh, anything to add, Mr. August? Uh, not really. I'd say we've covered most of it. We're getting long winded and the folks at home is probably, when you guys going to We got a up? Bengals football game on here in a few hours. Uh -oh. so I got to get this edited and get up there. And yeah. So. Get to watch my food. Well, we got another gun to shoot, too, a few rounds before. Yeah. We yeah. got to get yours on paper for gun season. So, yeah. Yeah. Gear yeah. season's coming up. All right. So, with that, everybody, remember keep your knives sharp, keep your powder dry.
and subscribe to Last Minute Man and watch us on Rumble. And subscribe on Rumble too. We need it. We need it. Yep.